Welcome to Florence. Florence, being the birthplace of the Renaissance and home to one of the world's most iconic domes, this medieval city is one of Italy's most scenic spots. With so much to see, in this travel guide, we're covering the top things you need to see and do when you visit Florence. Let's start with the top thing to see on everyone's list when they come to Florence, and that's the famed Santa Maria dei Fiori Cathedral, or as the locals call it, the Duomo. This iconic church is one of the largest cathedrals in the world, and its brick dome is the biggest on the planet. With its towering dome visible from all over the city, the Duomo will be your key landmark for navigating Florence's sometimes chaotic medieval streets. The interior of the church is plain compared to other Italian cathedrals, but its stunning architecture still makes it unique. And while it's free to enter, you'll need tickets to enter some of the coolest spots in the Basilica and to skip its notorious line. So let's quickly cover that. The best way to get tickets is on the official site, which we'll link below. On the site, there are a few different ticket options. If you want the best views of Florence, we recommend you purchase a ticket that includes climbing Giotto's Bell Tower. This allows you to see Florence's impressive skyline, the Tuscan countryside, and the cathedral dome from above. While the 414 steps to the top can be tiring, the views are absolutely worth it. And the top of the bell tower is caged in, which is ideal for those that are scared of heights. If you opt to climb the dome instead, you'll have a cage-free, unobstructed view of Florence from the top, which might be better for pictures. So keep this in mind when deciding which structure you want to climb. So we're walking up Giotto's bell tower right now. As you can tell, I'm pretty out of breath. It's pretty much straight up, but we want to get there quick because there's way less people here than there's going to be at any other time during the day. One more thing as we keep climbing, while exhausting, the views keep getting better and better. So we've made it to the top of the bell tower. If you can't tell from the beads of sweat dripping down my face, it's a bit of a hike getting up here, literally, but the views you get the Duomo and the whole city are absolutely incredible. We chose to do this right when it opened at 8.15 and there's way less crowds than normal. So if you're looking to get a great view without the crowds, definitely get here early. While near the Duomo, consider also choosing a ticket that has access to the Cathedral Baptistry. The Baptistry is one of the oldest buildings in Florence and is located right out front of the Duomo. This has been used for baptisms and other religious ceremonies for over 1,500 years. The inside of the Baptistry is known for its impressive mosaics, but it's actually the grand bronze doors that it's most famous for. The most impressive is the Gates of Paradise, created by Renaissance master Lorenzo Ghiberti. These intricate bronze relief panels depict scenes from the Old Testament, showcasing exquisite exquisite craftsmanship and storytelling that has captivated generations of admirers. While the doors on the baptistry are now replicas, you can see the originals nearby in the Opera del Duomo Museum, which is included with most Duomo tickets. If you have time, it's worth stepping into the Duomo Museum, where you can see many of the famous sculptures and ornaments from the cathedral up close. It's located just behind the Duomo, and we felt this museum helped us appreciate the significance of the cathedral. It walks through the construction history, key features, and also houses some of Florence's most beautiful religious artifacts that we might otherwise have missed. So be sure to check this out if you're Museum buff. Also included with most of these bundled Duomo tickets is access to the ruins of Santa Reparata. This is the remains of past structures that lies beneath the basilica, dating back to the 4th century. This is a mysterious labyrinth beneath the church that's worth popping into if you have the tickets. It can be a little claustrophobic at times, but really helps you realize how much history is in the Duomo. Not only is it fun exploring the ruins, but the admission line to enter the Santa Reparata bypasses the main queue that forms to normally enter the church from the front. So if you want to avoid waiting in that dreaded line, consider entering here if you have the tickets. Next on our list is to visit one of the most interesting museums in Florence, the Galileo Museum. Located in the heart of Florence, this museum is just a short walk from many of Florence's other key attractions. As the name implies, this museum is dedicated to Galileo Galilei, one of Italy's most famous scientists. Inside, you'll find incredibly intricate scientific tools, maps, and experiments used by Galileo himself, as well as other leading scientific figures. We really enjoy marveling at room after room of the interesting tools and listening to the history behind the experiments and the results for humanity. They even one of Galileo's fingers on display if you want to see an odd piece of preserved history. This museum really impressed us and felt like a truly unique museum. We are just leaving the Galileo Museum and the name's a little misleading because there's way more scientists in there than just Galileo. It's a museum full of the scientific instruments and experiments that led us to where we are now. And what's so cool about it is you see the science of the ages, but you also see just like this interconnectivity of science, art, and philosophy with kind of how they built the equipment and how much intricate detail went into it. It's actually a surprisingly incredible museum. Another thing to know is it is peak season right now in Florence and most things have lines out the door and this museum you can walk right in there's really no lines so if you're looking for a really cool exhibit without the lines definitely check out the Galileo Museum. While in Florence, be sure to travel over to the Ponte Vecchio, a picturesque bridge spanning the Arno River. This is one of Florence's main jewels, showcasing the Renaissance's timeless elegance. Known for its distinctive double-decker design, the bridge is famous for its row of charming shops that span the centuries-old bridge. There have actually been shops on the Ponte Vecchio since the 13th century, but the shops looked a little different than they do today. Initially, there were actually a lot of butchers, fishmongers, and later tanners in the area 
area. But as you can imagine, this started to make the bridge a little bit smelly. So in 1593, it was decreed that only goldsmiths and jewelers were allowed to have their shops on the bridge. And this is still the case today. So if you're looking to invest in some timeless jewelry pieces while in Florence, be sure to window shop on this unique bridge. This is probably one of the most iconic spots in all of Florence. And this bridge is packed with history. Believe it or not, when the Nazis were retreating, Hitler ordered the Ponte Vecchio to be destroyed. One of the generals thought it was too beautiful to be destroyed and he left it, which is so great because you can still appreciate it today. Definitely check it out while you're in Florence. Next, if you're looking to appreciate some fine art, you can visit the Academia Gallery or Galleria dell'Accademia. Its most celebrated attraction is Michelangelo's iconic marble statue, David. Oh my God, is that David? Which is a breathtaking example of Renaissance sculpture. But if you don't feel like going inside the museum to see David, there's pretty much an exact replica outside in the piazza where David used to stand. David actually stood here for hundreds of years and they later decided to move him inside of the museum to keep him safe because at points his toes were damaged, his arm was damaged, and then he also got a little bit of sun damage outside. What's interesting about David too is he was actually built to sit on top of the Duomo, so that's why his head might appear a little bit big. Michelangelo designed him so that the perspective was correct whenever you're actually looking up at him, so it would look normal. So if the proportions seem a little bit off, that's why. And really quickly, we're gonna take a second to do a shameless plug of our Amazon company, where we sell packing cubes like you can see behind me. We have two sizes of these packing cubes, small and large. The small size is designed for kids' clothes, and the large you can fit pretty much any outfit you can think of. We'll have a link to our Amazon store in the description below. Any and all support means the absolute world to us. But if you're not in the market for packing cubes, that's fine too. We're jumping back to the video. Located just two minutes from the Ponte Vecchio and along the Arno River is the next thing you need to see in Florence, and that's the Afuzi Gallery. This is an incredible museum that ranks among the world's most renowned art exhibits. Housed in a historic Renaissance palace, the Afuzi is celebrated for its extraordinary collection of Italian and European art, featuring works by luminaries such as Botticelli, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Raphael. Some of the key masterpieces inside are Botticelli's The Birth of Venus and Michelangelo's impressive Tondo Doni. Next on our list to visit is one of Florence's famous wine windows, or Bucchetta di Vino as the locals call them. Hundreds of these small shuttered openings were built into the walls in the 16th and 17th centuries for passing wine to customers during the plague to avoid physical contact. With the pandemic, many of these windows were reopened, and now no trip to Florence is complete without ordering a glass of wine from these ancient windows. Believe it or not, these are all over the city, but only a few of them are still in operation. Their origin dates back to the plague when people still needed to get wine but had to social distance way back when. And a couple restaurants still use them today. We first saw this on The Amazing Race when they had a challenge where they had to go to three different wine windows in Florence. And while we're not hitting three of them ourselves, it is still cool to see them all around the city. So definitely grab a drink while you're in town. Next up is a visit to Florence's Mercado Central, or the Central Market, which is a bustling market and food hub. Housed in a beautiful 19th century iron and glass structure, this market offers a wide range of local produce, artisanal meats and cheese, and a dazzling array of Italian delicacies. The ground floor is a vibrant marketplace where you can sample some of the flavors of Tuscany and shop for ingredients to create your own Italian feasts. The upper level boasts a food court filled with a variety of stalls serving up delectable dishes from all across Italy. We'll be stopping here in our upcoming Florence food tour video where we cover the most iconic foods you need to try while you're in Florence, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Outside the market is a grand bazaar selling more Florentine trinkets. Florence is known for their leather goods and there are tons of people selling huge varieties of purses and belts. We've had family members pick up these leather souvenirs and they're great quality, and they've held up incredibly well over the years. If you're looking to get a great view of the Florentine skyline, you'll need to walk up to Piazzale Michelangelo. This captivating terrace offers the most panoramic and breathtaking views of the city. Named after the renowned Renaissance man Michelangelo, this viewpoint provides amazing overlooks of the Ponte Vecchio, the Duomo, and other major Florence landmarks, all framed by the picturesque Arno River. The square itself is adorned with copies of Michelangelo's sculptures, creating an open-air gallery that pays homage to the city's artistic heritage. It's a bit of a hike uphill to get here, and you'll be marching up steep switchback streets, but the sunset views from the top are totally worth it. So we're at Piazza Michelangelo. It has an amazing view of the Florence skyline, and I think we're the only people that know about this place. Just kidding, it is packed if you come here at sunset, but it is absolutely worth it. The hike up is a bit of a walk. You definitely will break a sweat on a hot summer day, but for that view, it is absolutely worth it. Next up, we're traveling back to the area near the train station to check out the next spot to see, and that's the Santa Maria Novella Church. This striking example of Italian Gothic and Renaissance architecture was built between the 13th and the 15th centuries. Its famous facade boasts intricate marble works and a stunning rose window, making it a true architectural masterpiece. Inside, visitors could admire a wealth of art treasures and many famous frescoes. While we didn't enter the 
church, we've heard it's one of the prettiest interiors in Florence. Another iconic thing you need to do when visiting Florence is to take a photo in one of the city's photo automatica machines. These retro style kiosks are original machines from the 1950s through the 80s and capture candid moments in the classic black and white style. These are beloved spots to pick up an authentic and vintage souvenir right on Florence's historic streets. And if you're looking to get your steps in and also get your bearings while appreciating some of the city's fine details that are often overlooked, you'll love this next thing on our list, and that's to take a Rick Steves audio tour of the city. The Rick Steves app has a free, self-guided tour through Florence's city streets, which covers some of the city's most impressive features and tells their historical stories. This is a fun and free way to admire all Florence has to offer, and all it takes is popping in an earbud. We love these Rick Steves walking tours and personally believe they're one of our favorite things to do when we arrive in a new city. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel to see our other countless videos from around the world. We have videos coming out on the top foods to try in Florence, as well as a detailed guide on how to plan a trip to Florence and avoid its notorious lines. So be sure you're subscribed for that. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Ew,